Four months later, I was on a flight to the company world headquarters with my speaking notes in my briefcase. I'd taken Vance's advice and designed my talk as if I was chatting with Paul or any other manager and sharing my ideas about how we might better approach health and safety and performance in general. As promised, Vance had set 20 minutes aside for me early in the morning of the conference's first day. When he introduced my talk, he simply said, I've asked Court to share his ideas on performance management with an emphasis on health and safety, which I predict will be different than most of ours. That's why I brought him here, to shake up the way we think, get us to think outside our boxes, and consider new ways to do what we do. Court has a reputation in the company as being an unconventional character who sees the world a bit differently than most, and I think he's the perfect person to kick off this conference. Please welcome Court. As I stepped onto the stage, I looked out at the convention room full of 600 executives, and I thought to myself, well, dude, you asked for it. You're here, exactly where you would hope to be. Don't blow it. I took a sip of water and peered around the room. Studying the eyes of the audience, I could tell from the anticipation on their faces that Vance had set them up well for my talk. Over the next 15 minutes, I made three assertions. First, it is unacceptable to harm people in the pursuit of business results. I explained our current injury and incident targets were an admission that we believe people must be harmed for us to do business. I warned that the day was coming where society would no longer allow us to harm people in order to produce business results. We had better figure out soon how to produce those same results without harm to anyone or anything, or the public was going to revoke our right to operate. Second, numerical injury goals have no place in the management of health and safety. I detailed how health and safety are different than any other aspect of business. It's about people. And the moment we start talking about numbers, we're not talking about people. Even worse, we're objectifying sacred, living beings. Third, you can't measure what is most important to performance. I concluded by explaining that health and safety professionals, as well as most of the managers in our company, are entirely too focused on the technical side of management. Instead, they must shift their focus to the human side. In the near future, health and safety and performance management in general would be much less about equipment, systems, and processes, and much more about leading and inspiring people. Those executives who were unwilling or unable to make this shift would soon find themselves redundant. I spent about five minutes on each of these points, giving brief examples to demonstrate why our current way of being and acting was limiting our performance. Finally, I said, I very much appreciate the opportunity to speak with such a distinguished group of leaders. Thank you for listening to my ideas. I have five minutes left for questions. I looked eagerly to the crowd. There were no questions. For several moments, I stood there looking into hundreds of blank faces. Every time a person shifted in her seat, I looked in that direction, hoping to see a hand shoot up or someone stand. Neither happened. If there had been crickets in the room, I would have heard them. I thought, I wonder if Deming ever experienced this. Still, I remained confident in my assertions. Not that I was right and the audience was wrong, but that I could see a new way of attacking our performance challenges. From my perspective, lives in our company were at stake in this conversation, so I had no qualms about standing for those people who would be harmed if we didn't change our ways. I was ready and willing to take whatever response the group gave me. My thoughts were interrupted when I noticed a person in the audience, about halfway back and to my left, standing. I smiled in his direction. The man cupped his hands around his mouth and yelled, He's a witch! Burn him! The audience responded by laughing loudly, cheering, and giving the man a standing ovation. I'm the young, enthusiastic exec the rest of the crowd is ridiculing. I thought, this is an interesting development. Before I could even consider how to respond, I realized Vance had joined me on the stage. He was walking toward me, carrying a microphone. This got the attention of the audience, who stopped cheering and retook their seats. When the audience had settled down, Vance turned to me. I have to say, I don't agree with a single thing you said here today. 